I'd like a 90 for my 30th. How are you going to spec it? And that comes from Yasmin from Shropshire. It all started working on a series in my dad's shed. I'd followed my dreams and joined the Marines, serving in Afghanistan. Defenders were always part of me. So here we are, building custom machines with my awesome team in Shropshire. We are Maker. Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Dave, this is episode 13. So guys, it's been boiling hot this last couple of weeks. Um, as I'm sure if you're from the UK, you can experience the heat. We've been absolutely sweating our bits off in this workshop. Um, the lads have been struggling on, but powering on. As you can see, this build behind me has made some significant progress, basically. We've been bombarded recently on Instagram and Facebook with questions. Questions about the builds, questions about what we do at Maker, questions about why we do what we do with the cars, why we give them what engines we give them. So basically, I'm here now to answer those questions for those of you that have sent me questions. And also, I'd like to answer the questions that people have asked and I've not been able to get to. So please bear with me. We're super busy at the moment. And I would like to get back to you as and when I can. But for those who asked questions last week, Here's your answers. Jack Evans on YouTube says, what are currently the best shock absorbers for comfort on a 90? So when it comes to a 90, depending on if you're towing a lot or you're going to be carrying a lot of weight, sometimes people carry cages like this one here. That's always adding a lot of weight to your car. If you want to be an absolute perfectionist, you need to get your car corner weighted and basically valve to suit. That's expensive. So we've teamed up with a number of big suppliers, Fox, Bill Stein, King. Um, there's many out there. We've used Coney in the past, um, Bill Stein, things like that. As you can see here, these monsters here, these are 2.7 inch pre-runner shocks. So these are for cars running big tires, big axles, a lot of weight on top. Someone that is gonna ride terrain pretty hard and fast, but for yourself, I'd say you wanna go with a set of Fox, something like that off the shelf, the valve's ready to go, and they will, they'll outperform anything on the market for value for money wise. Cool. Um, I think this is uh, Pierre again on YouTube. Uh, would you restore a Discovery One from the chassis up and how would you do it, including the interior? So basically, it's a tough question to ask, answer because it's all down to personal preference, but we would restore it basically back to manufacturers spec basically but better so where they've used one mil plate we'd normally use three mil plates so the vehicle's going to last longer it's going to be stronger and more robust in the areas that normally corrode interior that's going to be down to you unfortunately you give us what you like and what your flavor is and what your taste is and we'll make it happen um, and we've also had a few questions dave about snorkels we don't i i've, I've not filmed a, you you installing a snorkel why, why is that so here's a prime example so You've got an intake here, this is a four inch intake. To make an intake work on a car like this, that we've literally taken the whole engine bay up with a six liter engine and sometimes bigger, there is nowhere to get the pipe work through the car and up to the top. And as you can see here, we'll give an example, I'm six foot three, this here is up to my waist. If you're going through water that's more than up to your waist, you're gonna have wet feet, you have wet interior. And if you'd like your car like this one here, I think you're pretty daft if you're gonna go and stick a beautiful car like this in a river. Right, looking at some of the, uh, the questions that come through on Instagram then. What do you think personally is your best build? So our best build to date is probably Ethos. Ethos is sitting on the left of me now and I'm looking at it. Basically that build just works. So everything that we've ever learned going through builds from 2005 when I very first started building these cars, we've put every single bit of knowledge experience into that car so down to the shocks down to the springs and i think you can't put a price on experience so everything has gone into that and it just works it's it's a six-speed auto it cruises i think you can do 70 mile an hour at 1500 rpm and in my opinion it's going to be good on fuel as well as well as sounding awesome 
Um, Angus Petty asks, would you stick a 330D engine into my recently refurbished 200 TDI? So yes, if you wanted to improve your Land Rover, you cannot be the straight six BMW. Basically, the BMW is world renowned for being the most reliable engine. It makes torque for fun, it makes power for fun, and it just does what you request it to do. So yes, I would definitely swap it. Charleston Defender, what's the average cost of a build? <sighs> so anywhere from 30,000 to 200,000, depending on how deep your pockets are and what you really want to spend on it. Do you ever do anything with RR Sport over a 90 or 110? So the Range Rover Sport, super complicated. If you were to pull them to bits, and we're actually going to do one. We've got a five litre supercharged from a 2010. Um, if I was to tell you the loom and the ECU is 10,000 pounds only for a standalone, which to compare it to say an LS3, which is behind me, you'd be looking, an LS3 one is about three grand. So there's your comparison. If you want to throw 10,000 pound it, yes, it is an awesome engine, the Range Rover Sport. So you've got that TDVA, the TDV6, I would definitely not put in because unless you want to be changing cranks regularly. One that I've definitely filmed for you over the last few weeks. Um, how do you mount a BMW M57 engine to a Puma transmission? So basically, I can actually show you. Um, I'll add a little clip in there shortly how we do that. We have basically made an aluminium ring that goes on the back of the engine. One side of that ring is BMW. And on the other side of that ring is the Puma. And what we do, we've had a clutch specially made from scratch to basically accept the centre friction plate is um, Puma, MT82, and the flywheel is BMW. So that's how we integrate. We have a little spacer that all works. And there's some little tr secrets in that I'm not going to say on here, but if you want to buy a kit, hit us up on email or WhatsApp, and you'll, we'll sort you out. Cool. Um, let's keep going down this list. Um, from Lord Trousers 1977, <laughs> Um, is Captain Ratty's Land Rover going to beat mine in a straight line quarter mile race after it's done? Um, I think it will wipe the floor with you, sir. It, um, it's going to have a three litre twin turbo engine, coupled to a six speed if he makes his mind up. It's either going to be a manual or auto, but you might beat him if he can't get through the gears fast enough. How do you line up bulkheads and go about aligning panels? So as you can see on this one behind me, it's easier to demonstrate than talk about it. So basically, we work our way through. So you start off by loosely fitting your bulkhead bolts. These two reinforcement plates here have a big part to play in how level and what orientation the bulkhead sits to the chassis. So we mock everything up loosely. My biggest tip for you is either use some mock-up doors or basically measure your gaps, keep them absolutely parallel, and then build the car from the front to the back. And a massive tip is, I've learned here now, um, I'm not going to mention manufacturers because I don't like putting certain people down, but we use a company called Marsland Chassis. Marsland Chassis do never have an issue when they're lining up. Other manufacturers do, and that's all I'm going to say. That's why we use Marsland, and that is it. How many lifts have you got in the workshop now? Too many. It's hard to keep them busy, and it's hard to keep the lads busy on the cars. So it's, um, we're getting there. If you could fit any engine into any vehicle, what would it be? To be honest, the LS3 blows me away every time that we fit it. Um, recently, we did a car for a chap up north called Aiden, and that 330D not only twisted its drive shafts, but it has that much torque, it will wipe the floor with most cars on the road. So maybe not supercars, but it's super impressive. But getting back to that, let me answer that question. I would probably go down the lines of something like It'd be nice to put something like an F1 engine in, something that literally scream to the top, but also be exhilarating, but everything has horses for courses. So a Cummins for reliability and say outright torque, but you can't go wrong with, like behind me, a Corvette LSA. That is a supercharged monster. So you cannot request any more power than that will give you. Jim asks, will you work on Toyota Land Cruisers? So we have done in the past. Um, we try and stick to Defenders only because we have an abundance of spares. We carry a large stock of basically used items, panels, engines, things like that. Um, the biggest struggle is when it comes to Land Cruisers is the parts are readily available, but we try and focus on the British stuff more than anything. But we are happy to work on it if, it's, if you want to bring it to us and you like what we do. Another one on Instagram, uh, Classic Green Defender asks, do you make or sell HD DEF steering boxes? And if so, are they available to buy? 
So the steering boxes, we did try building a HD one a couple of years ago. They worked out far too expensive. So to make the internals, we looked at having them made from heavy duty components and remachined. It was going to go into like tens of thousands. So we did knock it on the head, but we can supply you with a brand new item that, and we can tweak them to make them even tighter. So yes, we can do that. We've got one here. Can you build me a ball bar with integrated lights for self-fitting in the Alta Hebrides? Oof. Depending on what vehicle it is, Defender, yes, we can do that for you for sure. Um, if you can just give us a heads up on what bumper you've got and what you'd like to integrate it to, basically Defender chassis or Land Cruiser maybe, if you can just let us know, we can make it happen for sure. How do you fit an LS? Can you send me a step-by-step -step guide? If you send me the money over to buy a kit off me, I would more than happily send you a step-by-step -step guide. And from, I don't know if you can see here, but basically we've made a jig that basically bolts to the, to the full, the four steering box bolts here. So any of you that are Land Rover orientated out there, you'll understand that these four bolts are symmetrical from left to right hand side. So we've made a jig that bolts into these four bolts. And then the plate that lives on the chassis, if you're not using a Marsden bolt-in chassis kit, that we have worked with Miles and Design in, we can supply you that kit along with our engine mounts to make that work. You can do it anywhere in the world. So the kit with the jig, we're looking to retail it at about a thousand pound, including the front mounts and the cross member mounts. Dave, um, this is from uh, Bronze 84. Could you supply and fit a six inch lift kit on a 2019 Mercedes G63? So I wouldn't advise going that tall, but if that's what you want, we can make it happen. We can make custom springs. We've got a couple of manufacturers that work alongside us. So if you want to jack up your G63 and go that high, we can make it happen. So you're pretty brave, Bronx, but we can make it happen. Uh, Green Man Tree and Garden asks, will you fit a winch to my tracked chipper for me when you get chance? I've been meaning to get back to you, mate, on that one. We can make it happen. If you want to get yourself your winch and your winch tray and get penciled in, we're pretty solid now until about end of September, but we can sure put a tray in it for you. Going back to some of the ones we've had come through on YouTube, um, I didn't see you asked us this question, but can you make the clutch lighter? So I think it was a young lady from London actually that asked that question. We can make your clutch lighter. We work alongside a company called LOF Clutches. They actually make a master cylinder that will, I want to say half, probably the effort that it takes to press your clutch. Um, these defenders are becoming more favorable now to the lady owners and especially partners that, I'm sure the partners aren't probably keen on it, them driving their babies and their pride and joys, but we can make that happen, and we can also automatically convert your vehicle if that's something that takes your fancy. Oh, that links probably well onto the next one, Dave. Um, what gearbox options are there for an LS3? So the LS3, we've got a couple. We can do, we can do the eight-speed auto, we can do the six-speed manual Tremec, which is for the people out there that love driving these cars and you really want a thrill-seeking Defender, the six-speed Tremec is the one for you. We can do the six-speed auto. That's what Ethos has got. It's what Fender's got. It's what Cerberus has got. It's what this one behind me has got. So we can, of course, we can make the six-speed happen, and that is the most favourable. I think this is the last one. Um, I'd like a 90 for my 30th. How are you going to spec it? And that comes from Yasmin from Shropshire. Oh yeah, so that's the other half. Um, she's been badgering me, and unfortunately, it's when some very expensive seats turn up, like the ones did for James's 90 the other day, she said, Dave, you know my 30th, can I have those seats? But what she doesn't know is they cost 9,000 pounds. So, of course, expensive taste, don't I know from buying that engagement ring? You'll have to be a nice girl, Yasmin, and make sure my favorite steak is on the table every night. <laughs>so guys here's a little catch up of what we've been up to this last sweaty week that we've had here in Whitchurch in Shropshire so project one back here the lads we've probably had three guys on this solid for the, the I want to say the last probably three weeks the body's gone on the chassis has been totally plumbed up so we've got brake lines fuel lines as you can see now our mighty brake kit we've got exhaust system fully fabricated we've got the full power feeds here to the red winch the beautiful Explorer 2 that's all wired in. We're going to do an episode soon of how to fit a winch and why you should use the correct cables, etc. So that'll be an interesting watch. We've been fitting this beautiful cage from our friends at Protection and Performance. They made this roll cage from scratch in the UK. So we're firm believers on supporting UK businesses. And that is why 
we buy from these guys and not the other people in it around, not to mention names, but British made, British quality, and it just works. There's no need to jig it, pull it, pull it out of shape to make it fit. This just fits. So we've also done the complete wiring. So Darren's been busy in here this week. Our latest maker battery box, I'm super proud of, looks the part and does it exactly what it needs to do. So as you can see in here, the whole car has been dynamated extreme. We want to make this car stop vibrating, basically. Get rid of the resonance. So the roof has been done in dodo matting. The dash in this car here, as you can see now, all the loom is in, all the ducts are in for the heaters. Michael, our customer, he wants us to fabricate him an aluminium dash. He doesn't like plastic in cars, so he wants us to make him an aluminium, basically flat panel dash. We've got some really quirky things going in here. We've got a rustic handbrake. We've got a very quirky, um, I want to say, what's the name of them now? Um, it's basically a, an old school heater. In fact, I'm going to go and grab it. Stop it there. Clayton heater, that was the word I wanted. So this is what Michael wants. We've got some really fancy valves that this is going to be plumbed up to. These here, for those of you that are like really Land Rover nuts, you will recognize this. This was used in the early series, like the war stuff. These cute, smart little vents here, little fan in there. This will truck some heat out, especially from that LS when it gets going. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna mount this in the back. He's gonna want it really toasty. So this is gonna go on the back of the ammo boxes that we're using as an armrest. So this car is gonna carry some really quirky features. So we've got this hemp material that we've been wrapping the door cards in. Super hard wearing and it just looks rugged, which is exactly what he wants from us. So Michael ordered these Recaro seats. I know they took a long time to be made, but anything that takes a while must be good in my opinion. So he's gone with these. I think they're gonna look super cool and they're super comfy. So it's certainly gonna be different. All right, let me get in the back of there. Why are you doing something? Chris, you can ask you what, what you think of it. He basically got to these bits and I thought he was losing the will to live, Chris. We're gonna put a roll cage. So this is going all the way to the chassis. So it was a bit uh, a struggle to fit this because they don't match the holes properly. So what we've had to do, we've basically had to trim the back end of this here, which is the second row door, basically latch it. So basically, we had to knock the chat here because this tube comes down here. Where does it go under there, Lou? To the chassis, isn't it? Yeah, go all the way down to the chassis. So if you come out here, Chris, you'll see, um, you'll see the reinforcings here. So the reinforcings, they basically double up on the, the rear shock mount. So it's super strong. If this car was to ever be in a rollover, the strength is maximized because the reinforcement runs from this tube, from this rollover tube, downwards, so, and then it's about 45 degrees to the chassis, so it makes everything stronger, safer, which is what we want for our customers. So this here, go over there, Lou. This is basically gonna live on here like so. And then there's another one at the back. And this one here is gonna have that Monair hood over there on the back. So it's gonna be a beautiful sand, lovely contrast to the Keswick green. What was the challenge, Louis, to, to fit in that? Sorry, I didn't hear what you were saying to me. Challenge, too much, too much the holes. The challenge is because the, the holes do, don't match properly, so you have to wiggle it and you you struggle a bit. But so, uh, any uh, any Romanian swear words went in at that point? Oh, a few. <laughs> we're sweating, we're sweating this week. <laughs> so, we fitted these hinges here. These are Kingsman's own hinges. Love these because the tool is not available on the market to undo these. Each tool is machined to fit these sockets, as you can see here. Nice Foster Bronze wear bush there. So not a bit like a locking wheel nut? Yeah, so basically, but you can't buy this on the market. So you can't just go take to Halfords and buy another locking, a locking one. These are custom made. So only the people that have these hinges will have a tool that fits them. So super safe, super secure. So we plumbed this engine up as well last week. And as you can see here, everything is taking place in the engine. So these are the engine cooling lines. These are integrated inside the radiator. 
This car here is destined for, I think somewhere, I think California, something like that. So everything about this car, we're trying to make it heat worthy. So hence the Monair hood. So that's gonna be super cool. So drop the windows, maybe take this off in the summer. But same again, we're gonna keep, so a rollover hoop here, rollover hoop here, and also one at the back for maximum safety. You got the shelf, can't you now? Them bolts, no good. Rolling. So guys, we've had, um, it's new boy day for Steve over there. He's now putting his, um, his toolbox in, so he said it's like moving house. So I think he's a little bit OCD. Everyone, this is Steve. Not quite OCD. See, look, Chris, do you think he's got OCD? Yeah. Trying to compete with tools here. He's got something to make up for, I think. <laughs> what we like to see? Good tools for good cars. My life savings. <laughs> is that the crap drill? Yeah. So th this arrived on Friday. Um, we're trying to help this customer out. He basically landed at me on, I want to say lunchtime on Friday. He said, Dave, I really need your help. Wednesday, he wants to go to, I think it's Cornwall for a family holiday. And his gearbox has mm, itself. So he's lost fifth gear and he said, Dave, should I drive to Devon? I was like, no, 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 no. So I gave Tom a call. I said, Tom, I really need a gearbox by Wednesday. He was like, Dave, not a chance. We've got a 10 week lead time. And, but what he's going to do, he's got a really good customer that's going to let me have his gearbox that the chap's waited 10 weeks for. So I'm super grateful for that chap. And this guy here is, we're going to hopefully get him on his holiday. We like to help people in need. And this guy did beg us a lot. So it's going to cost him a small fortune, but we're going to do gearbox, clutch. And I think he also wants a doubled in stereo. Talking about not taking it too far like, but we're putting that in it for him. And what else did he want? So I think we're going to go through everything, basically get it up to scratch and serviceable, but we've never had a G4 in here before. So basically Land Rover only made 95 of these. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's right. So they built these for a global expedition program. And I believe they also built some just for, you know, to sell to them at the market. People that basically wanted some that were spec, you know, this full roll cage. So it's super safe, um, all-terrain tires. I believe this came with like a two inch lift. So, our customer, the car's getting a bit tired. Like you say, it needs a gearbox, it needs a clutch. We're going to give him some nice Fox shocks, you know, some nice tasty upgrades, make it handle nicer for when he takes his family to, to Devon, obviously, and continue on from that. Um, I'd like to say the snorkel's an extra, so it'd be like a special vehicle for Land Rover, basically. Cracking car and looking forward to working on it and making it a little bit more reliable for him going on for the future. So guys, thanks for watching this episode. Um, it's been really nice replying to you guys. Um, thoroughly enjoyed your comments and questions. So if anybody else wants to know anything, don't be afraid to ask. So drop a comment below, make sure you subscribe, make sure you tell your friends. And there's gonna be some giveaways soon. So those who subscribe and share it, right? I'm watching and you might get some freebies. So keep your eye on the comments, keep your eye on the videos and please tune in next week. So I'm out from here, off to have a Sunday off and I'm already late to go home. So I'm already in the doghouse. So take it easy guys.